Okay folks, thanks very much for joining us. Um, today I'm going to be telling a clan chief muddler. Um, very popular lock fly, a Scottish, Scottish fly, but it's used a lot in the Irish locks here. Um, I had a wee bit of luck on it there a few weeks ago, myself and a friend had a few fish. Um, and as you probably guess, the spinners make short work of these small flies, so I'm going to load up a few more as well. So hopefully you enjoy this. So to start off with, I've just got 8 uni Unithread Black. And I'll just get it onto the hook here. I'll leave a wee bit at the head. As I work down, about halfway down, normally just pull off a wee bit of the thread. See if you're cutting it for later. And then just before we get to the ends, we're going to feed on the tag, which in this case is going to be a bit of braid. Because it's in another video. This is a, it's like a halo silver braid. Very, very strong. What we can do is we can feed this on now before we get down to the typical point where you would stop. Just securing it in. So you're making good use of your turns. Okay, I'm happy enough with that there. So I can cut this off. And then I'll just keep on weighing this around to where I want the tag to start, which is just maybe a third round of bender. So it's entirely up to yourself. Okay. Now then, I want this tag to last, and that braid is very strong, but we don't want to be slipping or anything, so what I'm going to do is, as you see, I'm going to put in a wee bit of super glue just on top, and around the edges. And I'm able to hold it down, but as I said before, if it starts to slip, it only slip one wrap as opposed to three or four wraps, you know, back to square one, and then just bring their thread up over it. You can put the glue on the thread as you go up, it's entirely up to yourself. There's plenty of glue in there. Okay, and then just wind up to where the hook starts to straighten and the bend meets the shank. Okay, that should do it there. And then we'll just do a few wraps to secure this. We'll start wrapping up the way towards the eye then. Just secure this in and just hide any, any bump through lumps. Okay. And then before we get back down, we can start tying the tail on the way down. So I've cut about four inches of fluorescent yellow floss. Again, it's very thin. I want about four strands. So what I can do is I can fold this in half. And that means you've got two, and then I'm going to fold it in half again. And that's my four strands there. Okay. So you want to feed this onto the hook, around the back. Make use of the weight of the, the bobbin. And whenever you're tying this in, make sure you have enough space for the length of tail you want. You know, so obviously you've got your, your excess here. So just make sure you're happy with that. I'm more than happy with that anyway, but some people like a really long tail. Some people like a really short tail. Entirely up to yourself. And again, I've got... This time some fluorescent orange floss, fire orange. And again, I'm folding it once, I'm folding it again. And that should give you your, your four turns, or your four strands. And again, I'm going to put this up on top. And then, as I'm working down to the tag, it's just making use of the turns. I'm going to make sure that red can stay up to the top as much as possible, but once it's in the water, it mixes anyway. Okay, up until where it meets the the silver. And see that silver's coming in the next wee kick as well. So again lamp is entirely up to yourself. I'm probably just gonna do maybe a wee bit but similar similar lamp of the body. And there we go. And then this is where I never find stuff on the desk, but if I can find some felt row, here we go. A wee bit of felt, I'll just give that a wee rub just to blend it in a little bit. Some people don't do it, some people do. Um, you can also use a toothbrush as well, or you can just whatever's handy, you can use a comb or whatever. Okay, so we'll just neaten up this excess a wee bit and we'll cut this off. We'll run a little bit of thread over it. Okay, I like most of that floss to be covered now. 
we are going to have a, a dub battery so i don't worry too much about the lumps and bumps we don't want any bright colors showing through on a dark body likewise we wouldn't want any dark colors showing through on a bright body which is why a lot of people would use the likes of white thread on a yellow body for example okay so now whenever we're going back down again we make use of the turns so we're putting in some oval and this is going to be our tag this is small small silver oval I'm just going to try and put this in underneath. I can go on top, I can go sideways, it doesn't really matter anyway. Okay. Get a few more turns to hide that a little bit more. <coughs> okay. Now, then, uh, now we're now onto the body. So the body is black dubbing. So whatever dubbing you prefer, turn it up to yourself. And I'm using natural black dubbing here. So I always struggle with natural stuff. What I do then to come up to this is for the first wrap, I actually take a couple of wraps back, which anchors in the dubbing. And then I can twist it easy enough on the on the the bobbin. Always twist in the same direction. Okay. That does. So we'll do a few turns. And this is going to be, don't worry if it's, you can have it tight, you can have it bushy, but this is going to be a bob flare at the top. So it's grand to have it a bit bushier than some of the other dubbins. And again, I'm constantly working this dubbin, and this is going to be, what's this, clockwise here. So I don't want to be doing anything anti clockwise. You get this nice straggly, and that, if you imagine, that'll catch loads of air and bubbles. As the flies being worked close to the surface. So then I've left a decent enough head. And I'm just bringing everything back here. I'm leaving a decent enough head because we're going to be putting in the mother head. So the body hackle or the palmers, it's two hackles. Um, you can, if you want, use like a um, like a red badger cock hackle. Because um, you're getting both colours then, depending on how thick or heavy you want the fly. What I'm using, I'm going to use a black cock hackle and a red cock hackle, like a very dark red scarlet colour. And you, it does, it's up to yourself, you put the red in front or the black in front, but I'm going to put the red in front here. And I'm just taking off the fluff here off them. They're similar size, I think the red is a little bit bigger. So I'm not going to worry about that there. I'm going to put on plenty of wax on my thread here. The last thing you want is this to slip. Palmering can be a bit frustrating as it is. And then I'm going to cut these off. Normally I would just leave them, but I'm going to cut them off just for a wee bit neater. I'm going to tie these in together at the same time. And I'm making use of going back on the body here, so I can get the bitch. But it turns there, so that's, that should be should be very secure. And then I'm going to grab my hackle pliers. So again, cheap hackle pliers with a wee bit of a wee bit of um, hook grip at the end does the job. And I'm just putting these hackles together. I'm going to grab the tips in the same spot because I want them to work together we're doing the dubbing here don't want one to be independent of the other okay and then our first turn or two will be a straight turn at the head so there's one there's two and then we do maybe three or four turns down the body so there's one turn on the body two turn on the body three turn on the body and then it's just coming in the four turns so as I'm holding this up, I'm using this tinsel and it's going to hold this down. So I'm going to use the first turn tinsel quite close to the tail. And that will secure it in nice and tight. And then do about four or five turns up the body. So there's two, three, four, five. And then we'll just secure this in underneath. And as I said before, there's a few fibers popping forward, but we'll get those on the way back here. Okay, so before we cut these ends or cut this or anything, I like to 
get the falco out again there's two reasons again as i said you want a bit of a, a bushy fly so this brings out a bit more of the fur but as well as that any leaf fibers trapped underneath any fibers trapped underneath that tinsel will be caught and you'll notice i'm doing the top and the sides here because the bobbin is at the bottom and then i'm lifting the bobbin up whenever i'm doing underneath because you can very easy fray the, the thread and you're back to the square one having to tie it all back on again and catch hackles and everything okay we'll chop off the tinsel here okay and then the, the two hackle tips as well so again have the scissors closed until you're right in there and then open just to avoid cutting on a hand extra okay you can start to see this shape forming now i'm gonna push this a bit back now, as i said before don't do it just like this here because you're gonna keep all the hackles on one side so i'm gonna make sure whenever i'm putting it back i'm holding the hackles to have a good 360 degree coverage across the hook and just weighing a little bit on top here and as you do you can see the hackles are all going backwards now but also those front hackles will start to splay a bit better because they're hitting the dubbing and basically that there folks is your clan chief and that, that's a great plan itself you could fix that all day long but i'm going to do a few extra things here so first thing is i'm going to put in a wing of flesh which isn't too traditional for this fly but it's just that it was on the last one so if it ain't broke don't fix it so what i'm going to do is i'm putting in two strands of crystal hair and a strand of Mara flesh and this doesn't have to go on the side this is just going to be on the top as i said like a wing i'm going to hold it and pinch and loop on top and i get two or three turns and then i can just work it up and if you wanted you could fold these back and you can get more flesh so we'll fold that back that'd be nice yeah let's fold that back and there you have a nice fleshy wing and then just cut you want those bits the tail every bit less whatever you think yourself okay right then that will look nice and again all the flags is optional so the last thing we need here so that's your flag complete you whip finish it and away you go but what i'm going to do is i'm going to put on a bit of deer belly and this really will create a great wake in the water and this is where muddler comes into it so the amount of hair you use is entirely up to yourself depends on how big or small you want it some people like it very thick just a personal preference so i'm gonna cut off it takes enough bunch here now, i won't bother i won't bother stacking this but what I am going to do is I'm going to take any of the longer tips. I'm just going to take those away. So it's quite uniform. Because we're going to keep some of these as a as a false hackle. But a lot of this is actually just going to be cut anyway. So take this into your left hand or right hand if your hand is the other way. But this dear belly was never on the under fair, which is great. So it's nice and clean. I'm going to just bring the thread up a little bit further because I don't want to do it too close where if I tie it in too close it'll push in the hackles but I want as much movement as possible so it's about the centre of the head there the thread I put this on top and then I'll just do two, two light turns one two and then on the third turn I pull it down and let it spin around the hook looks a bit all over the ship there but it works and you may go god what's going on there you can fix up a wee bit here so you can see the, the wing splayed a little bit but what we want now is you can see well you can't see the, the eye there so we need to push all this back we need to finish off the fly before we can start cutting so a lot of people i've seen some great techniques actually recently where um you, you cut before you tie it on which is great as well 
Um, but I think that's worked quite well. So what we need to do is we need to bring this thread through closer to the eye. And then tie in this eye. Now this is where you get wee mini bobbins and um, mini whip finishes and all and all this fancy stuff. But I'll tell you what, this is a great wee tip for you. And it's just by pure chance. So that's me tying on my head here, right? But if I do whip finish, this is going to bounce back. So what I've got is a wee mini clothes um, peg. This is actually, you get them, they hold up the socks and all that. And this one just, I found this somewhere. I thought, geez, I'll hold that. And I was using that for holding up, like, hold back peg fibre. It was very bushy. But what you can do is you can actually put this in. You can put all the, the hair back. Use this. Like, look at that there. You know, you've got the couple of fibres hanging out there. You could even do it again and get none. But it's not perfect. And then I can work up a head as much as I want. I'll put these wee bits out here. I'll cut them off at the end here. And then I can work finish with no issues of catching too much. Okay, and then I'm going to cut this thread. You notice I have loads of whip finishes. This is because for a muddler, I don't want to be doing two or three coats of varnish that I would normally do. I'm just going to do the one. I'm going to do it at this stage actually. So if we're going to find. Just before I let all that hair back again. I'm just put on. First, I want to get one double varnish. So it's not as strong as the other flies, but I don't want to be mixing any, only putting too much on the hair itself later on. There's some fires above, and fires below. What you can do if you do get fires in the eye or you do it at the end, a great wee tip is, let's see now, is getting a hackle tip. Or a base of a hackle and just putting it in through the eye. And it won't take any fornies off around the thread, but it will just clean out the eye a wee bit. So it's, it's, I do, if I, if I do the head at the end. So now I can let this go. <coughs> and you can see there's, <laughs> there's quite a lot of, of hair to be cut there. So it's time to get trimming. So. It depends on yourself. Some people cut, I've got curves here, but it doesn't really matter. It's only if they're sharp. And you can do a big head, a small head. Depending on the kind of lock and the wave that you want to fish. You can do a few with a large head, a few with a small head. You might want it as a, as a middle fly, you might not want it as a ball fly. Then you can just do like a wee small, neat muddler head. I'm just going to pull some of this out here. So we don't want to be cutting any of the, the tips either. Okay. And this is the bit that everyone hates in muddlers, myself included. So sometimes you can overcut it. Or undercut it. And then you just keep on looking at it. It's never going to be perfect. But the purpose is really, I guess, to create a nice big wave. Or a nice big... Um, I don't know what you call it, you know, create a bit of a wake close to the surface. It's not to look pretty. Okay. You can see as I'm cutting around here, I'm trying to avoid cutting the tips. If you get a few tips, don't be worrying. Can put the tips back as you're cutting. Okay, so I'm going to use sharp scissors there, quite blunt now. Okay. I said this worked quite well recently. Very popular fly on some of the Mayo locks, but also some of the Scottish flies or Scottish locks, and it is 
try to summon to see try to take them off. So definitely worth giving it a go. Just trying to get the last few bits here at the back. Without trying to cut any of the tips. This is where the other technique comes in a lot quicker of cutting before you you, you turn them on the hook. But it's just not as dense, which is, well I suppose you could do it twice. Okay, let's see how it's looking. Um, getting there. You spend as much time actually cutting the trimming the thing as you would actually tan the whole fly. <laughs> so just don't get caught up too much on it. At the end of the day, just want that big bushy head. And I think we're nearly there. Okay. And I think that would be the job there okay so there you have it folks that's the a very bushy size 8 clan chief muddler and that's intended for lock salmon and uh, hopefully he's given it a go hopefully he's have a bit of luck on it and as before um getting to do a few more videos now getting a bit more time so if you like what you see give us a thumbs up um subscribe and comment if you've got any questions or anything as well but yeah please do make them look it and i'll chat to you soon all the best take names